I love to see people take their passion and their knowledge and use it to help other people, but also to build a business for themselves. It's really exciting because every morning when I wake up, I'm like, okay, this is my why. Right here, this is my why. Today I'm joined by a special guest. She is a PA and her name is Jennifer Carlquist. She's going to tell us about the business that she has started from using her own clinical knowledge. So welcome, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me. What specialty do you work in right now as a PA? I mostly do cardiology, but I do moonlight in the emergency room. And what was your background before you went to PA school? I was a paramedic for approximately 13 years. Cardiology is your big love, right? Absolutely. I think I love that no matter how much you learn, there's still more to learn. So it's always exciting it's changing and the heart is complex. Not only does it have its various layers, right? The muscle, the walls, the, the valves, the arteries, the electricity, so to speak. There's also just all these other layers to the heart, the metaphysical things like people's hearts. And, and so those two things combined are really what I love. That's why I, I started painting because I realized that, yeah, you can take care of someone's physical heart and that's important, but it's also important to take care of their emotional heart. And I think you can do both and it makes you a stronger, better provider and you get better connections with your patients. You have actually taken some of the skills that you learn from being all the way back from being an EMT and a paramedic and that you use in cardiology every day. And you've actually started a business. Tell us a little bit about what's that business called and what is it that you do? It's called Cardiology Made Easy. And we have a bunch of programs that are all geared towards helping people learn the high risk EKG findings so that we can not only decrease our risk of being sued, but also save more lives. I found that there was a big void in what we were taught in school versus what we were seeing in real life. There was a lot of gray area. And there was also, in my mind, I felt like all day long, whether you're in the ER or cardiology or wherever you work, there's a lot of landmines that you're walking through. And Unfortunately, the machine software, which initially I thought was going to be my ticket to not having to know this so well, <laughs> turns out it's wrong anywhere from uh, 6 to 42% of the time. And I then realized, okay, so if the computer is not smarter than I am, and I didn't learn this in school, and people can die, I better figure out a really quick way to learn this like by tomorrow. And then through doing that, going through my own process of figuring out what those things were, I, I put together a course so then I could pull other people through without them having to struggle as much as I did. And when did you start this? I started this about three, four years ago. So it was, we were virtual right before the pandemic started. And so it was a nice segue because people were then like, oh, Zoom. Oh well, yeah, I know how to do that. <laughs> Okay, yeah, this is this isn't so foreign anymore. I'm always nervous when I go through reading an EKG and I usually always bring it to, you know, a supervising physician or somebody else just to say, here, this is what I think and what I'm seeing. Is there anything that I'm missing? Because it does worry me. I don't know the EKG that well. It's not something in where I've worked, like family practice, that we use it all the time. So I am thankful that there's people like you that are out there trying to help educate us, because I do think once you come out of school, there is, a, like you said, there's a void of being able to find that information. And I've, I've tried. I've tried going through the books on my own, but I, I, don't, I don't have that feedback. And I, you know, I don't have a, a live person. Well, yeah. I assume you're live. Tell me, before I get too much into this, tell me kind of how the, the structures go. Are, are, your, are your teachings just recorded or do you do a combination of different things? Well, first of all, I just want to go back to one thing you said just a minute ago yeah. that you're, you're not alone. And I think that it's probably really comforting if other people also know that. Because when I speak around the country at different conferences, people come up to me on the break and they sort of have a little confessional time. And they'll say things like, I feel like an imposter or I just, I really feel like I, I should know this. And oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know what, to, and there's a lot of fear surrounding this. And so it, it's, it, there's this kind of a shame around it. And I, that's my goal is to take away that shame and that stigma because right. like you, said, you went to the books, so does everybody else, right? You, right? you actually need a mentor with this. It's too complex. So you, you just need that. But mm -hmm. so what I did was I have a couple of different ways that I do this. My, my first and foremost priority was to make it very readily available, easily accessed and free so that people could come join this EKG party that I throw once every six weeks. 
for five nights. It's called the five day EKG challenge. And I'm live with them for five nights. And what we do is we spend the first night going over some fundamentals and we have a little workbook that they can follow along with. And then we also do the next four nights, we cover four high risk findings and two of them we will be looking for in sports physicals. So we talk about it, we deep dive, we interact with folks. They can jump on, jump on Facebook Live or Zoom. So there is that live piece, but if they're working, I record it and store it so they can watch it at their own pace. What's exciting about that is that we've had this group open for about, I think, two years. There's almost 14,000 members in that group, really phenomenal. And this is what's the, where the magic is, is that when we're on live, people who've been coming back and coming back, even though we're covering the same material, we cover it a little differently. We have guests on, but they come back and they support each other. And so we actually created an environment where we don't eat our young, because that was the frustrating thing for me when I was first learning is I felt like there was this hazing almost component to make you good. And I think what people actually need is they need to know, they need to get baby steps to see, okay, maybe I can do this, take the fear factor out of it and realize that it's not their fault. So it's kind of a mindset tool set thing before we can really lay down the foundation of all the, the things you need to know, because there's all these roadblocks, right? And then before you go, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you, because it is so it's so disheartening to everyone that gets into PA school or, or you know, studying medicine in any capacity. I mean, we're smart people. We're achievers. We're people who have have excelled at stuff. But medicine is so complicated. I'm a little teary eyed right now. Medicine is so complicated and so complex. And there is so much to know. And you have to learn it so quickly that it's so frustrating to face that kind of attitude. Like, well, what do you mean you don't know this? You know, it's like, well, excuse me, I can't memorize the these huge books and, and know everything in two years. So thank you very much for having that attitude and for helping those of us out here that are struggling. So I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to, to thank you for that. It's, it, that was really important. So that program that they're going to go into after, which I've created called the 30 day, 30 EKG challenge. That's what you go into next, which is okay. now a one, it's a one year container where we have things called study halls. We have EKG classes. We have ongoing support where people can bring EKGs and go over them with them. But I, I had this vision. And so I said, okay, I want to create a place. And this is part of creating in general. I've been learning lately. Visualization is everything. I wrote down what I wanted to create. I wanted a nurturing environment. I wanted people that felt like family to each other and to me. I wanted to um, make the learning as digestible as possible. I wanted to make it very hands-on so that we could keep people's interest levels there. And I wanted them to keep wanting to come back. So flash forward now, that's exactly what's been created. And it's just, it's so cool because people who initially felt so overwhelmed, just within a, a month, they get up and running to where we get them confident. Because we but basically what we do is we bring them in, we do EKG terms, basic arrhythmias. Then we do a very hands-on EKG workshop. And I have seven coaches that teach with me. Oh wow! And they all came through my five-day challenge. And we're standing out in some way. And I've now created this team. And so it's not just me, it's all these other people. And they're all heart-centered people who root for the students. And they say things like, there's no dumb questions. And there isn't. And so it's just, you, they get all, and then we all teach very seamlessly. So everybody has the same experience, the same views. We're all teaching the same color coding of the reciprocal leads contiguous, right? And so we all speak the same language. We all know each other's strengths and we kind of blend well together. And that's what's really, really neat. And now we have this year long container. We used to have it in just a one month, but we were like, people are gaining momentum and then it's time to go. So we, we lengthened it and now they don't feel as pressured, which is good. People are busy. They need time to digest. And they also need, which is one, one thing I learned is repetition. They need to see it more than once to really get it because this is such complex. And then if they're in family, because we have a lot of family uh, practice providers, they don't do it very often. And so, you know, they, and they need extra training that they're not getting. So we just developed a class on preoperative clearances. We developed a class on anticoagulants for the primary care provider. So they also have access to um, not just EKGs, but also things that they're going to deal with that we can help them with. So it's like, we also do lipid stuff, which is so fun. Then we have two lipid specialists. We have a physician and we have an, a nurse practitioner out of Florida that come in and it's just really, really cool. I mean, I mean, I know I love it because I created it and everything, but it's it's really exciting because 
every morning when I wake up, I'm like, okay, this is my why right here. This is my why. And then someone's life, you know, is changed and they're going out and saving other lives. And that's, that's, what's cool. When they go teach somebody else that they work with, Hey, look what I found. That's really magic. So let me recap, just make sure I get this correct. Every six weeks, you do like this free boot camp where people can can join online and you go over some of the high risk EKG findings that you can't miss, right? And so help educate people on those. And then if people want more or need more EKG training all the way kind of back to the, the basics of EKG training, then they can join in your paid course where they actually can go through all kinds of different things about EKG, but then you have those bonus cardiology modules in there as well. And you said they have like a year to to go through that course. Yeah, but we we not only record them, but we keep adding new content and changing it as we go along. So the first 30 days is like just boot camp, you know, getting them strong on EKGs and then the rest they can just kind of pick their own adventure. Yeah, that's really cool. And then do you, I think I saw that you do some some in-person events, correct? Yes, we're doing, uh, we just did one in Los Angeles. We're doing one more this year, actually a couple more, but the next one's in Monterey in May, where we'll be flying in three of the coaches to come do breakout sessions. So what's really fun is we're going to do patient scenarios and hands-on stuff in small groups. So people have that chance to ask questions that they're too afraid to ask. Um, And then we're also going to live stream it. It's going to be filmed in a professional studio. Oh, that's great. That sounds very exciting. Um, and I think that that's something, like I said earlier, it's something I think that is really needed. And uh, I appreciate you teaching other people what you know, the knowledge that you've gained. And I know that you want people to know that this was born out of a passion that you had, which actually always makes the best business ideas. Right? <laughs> but if there are PAs and NPs out there who are passionate about a topic, who have knowledge and experience and a skill, Would you encourage them? Do you think it's uh, possible for people to actually make a living to the point where they could, if they chose to, step away from clinical practice? Yeah, I think it is possible. You just have to create a model that the prices they would charge would be a little bit higher, right? So you can have a higher profit margin. But I think that there is a strong need for mentors. So like, for example, if a, a DERM NP or PA was starting something like this, what they could do is do a challenge with rashes. Like, what do you think this rash is? Right. And then go up live, talk about the rash. And then maybe they do a course where, you know, they have common rashes, but then they could also have live interaction, like maybe one live call a month where they could talk about rashes that people have come across, how did you approach it? You know, maybe bring pictures, you know, what do you think it is, but having somebody that is accessible is really the, the new way of learning. It used to be books and then it was recorded courses, but it's now more of like a hybrid version, I think. I know one thing that people might think about anytime that you are kind of teaching anything in medicine, I I would assume that you have to be worried about being sued, unfortunately. It's part of our our culture, right? Is that something that that people have to think about and, and how do you mitigate that? Is it just having a certain kind of insurance? The two ways to do it are that you make a disclaimer on your website when they sign up that you're not providing medical advice and that's the key and then there is a through our malpractice insurance we can get a speaking writer um, that i've also purchased as well so those two things offer layers of protection but one thing that i i have noticed that people often put ekgs in and they'll say what do you think and it's an active patient and unfortunately I'll say to them, oh, you know, we're, we're not able to answer questions about active patients, but, you know, we can certainly talk about an EKG and that sort of helps guide the conversation too for, for mm-hmm. folks. I think you just have to reframe that you're, you're educating and it's not actual medical advice. But is there anything else specific to teaching a course that, that you've kind of run across that maybe surprised you or that people may not think about? Yeah, I think, you know, when you have people who, um, have a hard time with the tech. That's that's hard when you're doing something virtual. Uh, a lot of times they'll say, "Where's the Zoom? I missed the live. I the, with you know time zones. It's it's always a challenge. And and also there's people who bring sometimes negativity that was unexpected. And so oh. I've made it very clear that I don't allow negativity and I don't allow bullying. And so if that happens, you're out of the group immediately. That's just an, I say that very clearly without any shame about that. <laughs> And, and then the next thing is I try to anticipate the problems 
after you go through it, maybe once or twice, you kind of see there's a commonality. So I make a time zone converter, right? I make a Google calendar they can download for reminders. I put a little, uh, it's called the chat bot in our group where they can get reminders that way. The handouts are sent to them that way. So the, the best way to do this is to autopilot as much as you can, because that saves you a lot of frustration. Unfortunately, the other part of the frustration is that Facebook and the, that technology piece can be difficult because with all the changes on the platform, people a lot of times ask me, well, why do you, why do, you do your classes on Facebook? You know, especially because not everybody has Facebook. And I do offer it via Zoom and Facebook now, but we stream via Zoom into Facebook. But I do it because I want that community engagement. And when you see, you know, Lisa, who's been there for two years, come in and she's welcoming the new people and they see there's not just Lisa. It's like, it's just really cool. And then the way it's stored you can store it in guides so people can go back and watch things later really easily. Whereas a Zoom, you have to like put them on a funnel or you have to put them on a replay page or somewhere, store them. But this is kind of a user-friendly way to do it. Yeah, that was the biggest challenge. What have been some of the biggest surprises or things that you might didn't, didn't expect? Well, I didn't expect to have as a guest one of the doctors that I learned from in the very beginning, Dr. Michael Chisner. I, I have all his books and I remember being in my little office when I was a, a student PA shadowing this cardiologist. I wanted to have all the answers. So I bought Michael Chisner's book um, called Cardiology Made Ridiculously Simple. And I would like find the answer and then tell my cardiologist. <laughs> so I reached out to his publisher and said, hey, there's a graphic on page you know, 19 I really want to share with my students. It's like a pericarditis great graphic. He like gave me permission. I, you know, paid the fee and whatever. And then through connecting with him, eventually we just kept in contact. And I was like, yeah, that Dr. Chisner is amazing. He's like, oh, well, here's a video of him teaching at the medical school. I was like, oh, this is so great. So flash forward to, uh, I think it was the beginning of this year. I got to talk to him on the phone and I got to tell him like what a power he had on how I learned what I learned. And then we, we got it so he would come in and do a lecture in the group as a guest. And he did heart sounds. And not only, so he didn't bring heart sounds with him. He mimicked the heart sounds with his mouth. And he gave me chills because I didn't know that he was this guy with such heart. And he came, I thought we were going to get a great lesson from, you know, hands-on, you know, real old school patient assessment. I was so excited. And then he busted out with all these seriously emotional, heartfelt, things and he's not burned out he's about to retire but he's not burned out and he still cares and I was like I want to be him when I grow up but getting to have him in my group that was a huge surprise uh -huh. and one of my other gurus Ken Dr. Ken Grauer he was someone I, I remember being a medic just like oh you know starry-eyed when I see his blog because he was like oh he's so up there and he's still up there believe me but having him on as a guest in that group and getting to find the people that I grew up on and bringing them in as guests was like, I don't know, that was, that was really cool for me, but also to share their talents with my folks was really special. And to know that they're, that you are probably training people who feel about you the way that you felt about these other people. So that's pretty cool. Also, you know, I feel like that paramedic on day one, every day, I still feel like, you know, I'm still humble. I'm still waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm always, I'm always, you know, on high alert. And it's, it's funny because I think the more, you know, the more you realize, oh, <laughs> oh, I really need to be scared <laughs> because right? then you're like, not so the blinders are off and you're like, oh, you know, one thing I, I would like to tell anybody watching this too, who may be newer um, is that if I could tell like the younger version of me or anybody new starting is believe it or not, the thing they don't teach you that helps you the most, that keeps you the safest is listening to your intuition. And unfortunately we're taught in our left brain science based mode all the time, right? We're taught, you know, prove it, prove it, prove it. And I do prove it, but that first hit that you get there, it's coming from somewhere. And if you listen to it, you will not be sorry. This all sounds amazing. And um, I'm actually excited to, to go look it up myself. And I will hope to join one of those challenges coming up soon. So tell us how people can find you and find these courses. 
the easiest way is just to go to conqueringcardiology.com and that has the link for the five day challenge or the, the paid courses as well. But there's also Instagram cardiology made easy. That's another good way to uh, contact me as well. Okay. And I will put those links down below in the description box. Uh, if you are interested and want to go check it out, just head down, down below and you can get right to where you need to be. And I just want to thank you for the work that you're doing. It does sound like a labor of love. It sounds like something that was born out of, of your passion for cardiology and for people in general. So I wish you all the best in this. And uh, like I said, I'm excited to check it out. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Michelle. If you would like to build a side business or maybe even a business that's large enough to allow you to step away from clinical medicine if that's what you wanted, then I would challenge you to look at your skill set. Look at all of the things that you have learned and experienced and think about the things that you really enjoy and what you would like to teach other people about. This is an opportunity that I think is wide open. There are lots of continuing medical education courses out there. But if you niche down, if you find that one thing that you are really good at and that you have a passion for, you definitely have a chance to make a great business out of it. I really hope you enjoyed this. On my channel, I am trying to show PAs and NPs all the opportunities that they have. I'll link some of those videos here. Thanks for joining me. Take care and I'll see you next time on The Medicine Couch. Bye.